That was his last wall break, so he doesn't have the core open, so he's in trouble here. This is definitely going to get dicey real quick here. He's about to gain his defensive queen. He will pop his ability there. He will get her down. Keep over the right there. Will pop his ability and search for, but what does the queen do? What does the queen do? Does she circle around or does she go through the wall? This will decide the war. Today is the grand finals of the Super Thrain Cup. Two teams have distinguished themselves all the way to the grand finals. We have on one side a team that just qualified into the world championship at Clash of Clans through the Chinese server qualifier that is SSF, aka Star Sky, and they will be playing in the World Championship under the name CK Rainy. But they are opening up today as we break out Super Bowlers in the new version of Hard Mode. And what is most impressive about this team as they get ready for this match against Mega Sultan, who's also been extremely impressive, but Star Sky has been able to put in two perfect wars since the new introduction of the new version of hard mode that limits the levels of the equipment. We have all the supercharged defenses here that could definitely give them some resistance, but when you combine that with a cap of a level 21 for epic equipment and a level 15 for common equipment, then it does make Clash of Clans way, way, way more difficult, and so we're seeing a lot more variety. Now, I don't anticipate this to go to a double perfect war. I, I imagine with the skill of these teams, we could potentially see one of them go perfect, but they're not going to risk an attack by going fast and rushing things to go for time when they know that if they do, they're probably going to end up missing and the time won't matter. And so Super Polars will make their way to the core of the base here as Carry kicks off with a funnel over to the left side there. And then the King was able to work on the right side of the funnel there as Druids just sprinkling in to go with the Super Polars. And we usually see healers with uh, the Super Polar attacks there. So this is one of the first times I've seen this with Druids. We've been seeing the Druids mixed with like the Super Witches a lot. And so it does make sense to throw this in there, but we need to get the Town Hall down soon. He's gonna be able to hit it there and then walk off to the right and just kind of sideswipe it there instead of going head first into it and taking the Blast of the Poison, which means he avoids the Blast of the Poison. He's still got a lot of force movement here, looking very, very good here to kick us off today. He's got Valkyries coming out of the Flame Breaker that was over on the right side of the base. And everybody is still moving very smooth with the Rogue Champion holding the Rocket Spear and the Seeking Shield. Notice how he only has a level 20 Rocket Spear. Now, that would, if it was higher than 21, be downgraded to 21. But at 20, I guess it gets the job done as we see people start to make the transition from the Hog Pot and Haze Pile over to the Rocket Spear and the Seeking Shield. We'll swag a freeze on that one as Super Bowlers and Drewers get the first triple of this Grand Finals. And just like that, we're underway with the next attack here. So let's dive over to Amiraza for the response. And dragons. Dragons are an interesting choice here because I've seen a lot of people failing with dragons. Actually, I think I've seen the most fails after the update out of the two attacks that used to be the two strongest attacks in the meta, which used to be the, the Root Riders and the Dragons. Now, we have seen some people still get success with it, so they're not completely dead, but they're a lot more risky. They're a lot less dominant in the meta. And so you have to make sure that the funnel is set strong. We're not going to be racing the clock here. And so we can take his time, use a Flame Flinger to set it up here instead of just trying to, like, just use, like, a rocket or not a rocket I guess, a giant arrow or something like that to rush into the base there. And so we see the long, long setup here with the Flame Flinger just coasted it in. We're going to see a handful of supercharged defenses here as Emmer Reza makes his way forward with the... Flame Flinger on the right side. Giant Arrow from the bottom. The Giant Arrow shot through the middle of the base there. But remember, it's only level 15 Giant Arrow. So it cannot one-shot arrow defenses. And so if he hit any, then it's not going to be able to stop the damage from incoming to the Dragons. But it would be nice if the Giant Arrow is able to hit Sweepers. Because it can still one-shot Sweepers. And that's where they can still sometimes take advantage of it if they can aim it correctly. But he didn't get a Sweeper. So he's taking some knockback. Freeze up the Sweeper and the Inferno. And then he'll hit the right there and surge his way forward. He's going to freeze the sweeper again. Lots of investment into the sweeper. When it would have been better if he could have just hit it with the giant arrow to begin with. But the work on the outside of the base there, the king out there doing some good work there. Running the spiky ball and the giant gauntlet. And we've been seeing a lot fewer people running the giant gauntlet ever since the update. It took a lot of big nerfs there. And we've been seeing most people switching over to like the vamp stash and spiky ball or the earthquake boots and spiky ball so quite the big difference here but the warden might be able to finish off this mono there which could potentially breathe a little bit of life in this but i think it's going to end up being a miss and I, i'm telling you the uh the dragons are significantly weaker than they have been recently the world champion will be overwhelmed and the first miss of the war comes in for mega sultan at an 82 percent so this grand finals is actually a best of three and so the teams will play up to three wars here if we see both of them take one of them. 
So we'll see how that ultimately plays out here. So make sure you subscribe to the channel and stay tuned all throughout the weekend here so we can see how this ends up playing out. If you don't want to wait for the video, though, you can definitely uh, click on the Twitch link in the video description and you can pop over there and you can see the full live stream on replay there so you don't have to wait for the videos to get edited and released. And obviously, you can always see all the wars over on Twitch before they're released over on YouTube. So definitely do that if you don't want to wait around. But if you like the edited version where we trim out all the extra stuff and me uh, talking trash in between the attacks there then i mean you know that if that doesn't uh match your cup of tea then uh then you um, how do you match a cup of tea i have some weird things that i say sometimes but let's get into stars guys we make our way forward here uh we will have electro dragons for this and crazy enough uh we just saw electro dragons have the world record set by mo shifters that i put out on a youtube short yesterday and so we could absolutely see this attack just leveling a base there because we know the super dragons uh, or electro dragons i mean have been very powerful i feel like they're way more powerful than all the other dragons in the meta right now i have seen the regular dragons and the super dragons just get completely shut down but electro dragons are actually faring quite well right now especially when you hit the giant arrow onto the sweepers you don't necessarily have to get the air defenses because if you only have a level 15 giant arrow then you're not gonna be able to one shot them but for most people out there for most people, you're not playing on hard mode, and you can get a level 18 Giant Arrow and not be restricted to the same rules as these guys play on hard mode. And so you'll be able to one-shot air defenses and the sweepers and the archer towers as well. And obviously, you can get a ton of value with your queen to be able to set up electric dragons. But we have to finish off the base here. We did get the healers to transfer over. We got a rocket spear. Remember, rocket spear is able to take advantage of the rage onto the road champion because it increases the rage increases her base damage look at that he's in, he's in a swag there the rocket spear is based off of her base damage not like a set amount of damage like the fireball and the spiky ball and so the rocket spear gets boosted by a rage on top of the healers getting the extra healing and keeping her alive on top of that so the rage on the road champion with the rocket spear I think is very, very important right there. And he does get it done. And that was another level 20 Rocket Spear that not even maxed it out here. If you rewind that last attack, you can see that the Flame Flinger on that attack only took out like two defenses total. He got like a multi mortar they started it into, and then he got an air defense down. And so surprising that he's able to clear out the backside of the base there with that kind of a mistake. But uh, here we go. Mazir throws a Fireball. Fireball and Super Witches are one of the most powerful attacks in the meta right now. And so this one could absolutely get the job done. He used, what, three invisibilities to deliver that fireball? So I like to see them use like uh, two or three invisibilities to throw the fireball past the first layer of defenses. And then you got to combine it with two earthquakes. On hard mode, you have to do two earthquakes because you only have a level 21 fireball and not a level 27 fireball. With level 27, you can use one earthquake and get the same value. So if you're trying to copy these guys, you have to account for the slight differences that the hard mode is putting on these players, which means you'll probably have a higher success rate than these guys with the same attacks if you try to copy it and you'll have more spell support on top of that. But into the core of the base we go, sprinkling in the druids. So we've got a lot of druids down early. Put down two initially. We see the second ones at the the greater channeling, channeling bar. They're about to transform. And so we will maybe have deployed too many druids too early here but he does start to drop in the rest of them and they're gonna follow the pack into the base here i, I feel like he may have rushed his druids here I, th I think you want to preserve and like go minimal druids at the very start and then sprinkle in more later on but he does get an extra druid over to the far right side to work with the pekkas and the siege barracks groups and the world champion will go right in between the pekkas and the main force but there's the spiky ball with the earthquake boots i told you we're seeing a lot less people running the giant gauntlet and more people are running this combination of equipment if you can get the key to the core of the base there and you can take advantage of the new version of the earthquake boost that has a bigger radius then you're going to get some huge value I, I did i just say the world champions over the right side that's the queen over there the world champions in for the far left there and she's going to make her way forward there there's the seeking shield and once again rocket spear that i've been saying it since we saw the nurse to the hog puppet as soon as these pro players have a chance to switch over to rocket spear and seeking shield they absolutely will it is very very powerful and it's a triple for Mega Sultan. It's going to be difficult for Mega Sultan to find a defense in this war with the way the Star Sky has been playing. Because like I said, they have only had Perfect War since the update launched. They have played two different wars this week so far. One of them was to get into the grand finals of the Hurricane Cup. Or excuse me, the, the upper bracket finals, not the grand finals. And so they put in two Perfect Wars 
this week so far and that means that they have gone their entire week since the update without a single miss in any of their esport matches which is pretty impressive seeing that no other team has been able to achieve even a single perfect war to my knowledge but we'll see what happens here as we see super bowlers and honestly i was expecting to see a lot of super witches and maybe even some rear riders but super bowlers are making their way back into the meta as we see them going in for another time this war but over the side there the flame figure continues to work his way forward there he's got the funnel set he has the option for the jump but i feel like he's gonna do wall breaks he has the first wall break down and this bottom compartment is cleared so the next wall breaker will target all the way up to the defensive queen making sure to put the king into the core of the base the queen is going to go to the core of the base there as well run the frozen arrow and the invisibility file and i think a lot of these guys actually have a max level magic mirror and so it's actually quite surprising i'm honestly very very surprised that we're seeing so much use of the invisibility vial over the magic mirror when it is obviously an option for them so Maybe that's telling to say that maybe it's not worth leveling up the Magic Mirror. I'm not really sure. I think that most people should just unlock equipment every single time it's released so you don't have to go chasing it down later and have to spend gems on it. But you never know what the meta is going to say. And right now, it's kind of leading this way. But he gets to the core of the base there. The King running the Earthquake Boots and Spiky Ball. That is like a sure fire way to make sure that you can get some good value of the king is to run the earthquake boost and the spiky ball but once again there's the roar champion rocket spear and seeking shield so you know that they're they're pumping some ore into these upgrades and if they're choosing to upgrade the rocket spear and neglecting to upgrade the invisibility or the the magic mirror to go for the invisibility file then that should be very telling of where we should potentially be aiming our own upgrades as we work our way through but i think we need to get this model down the battle builder has repaired it he's got extra rage here and he's got the wall open down south he could absolutely circle around here he's got the valkyries that can provide some protection for quite a long time he's got the warden following the warden will have the healers there and the spirit box will take the initial strikes there as he makes his way forward but the warden is not going to be able to actually target the model so he's just going to stand on top of it but the healers are trying to keep him alive he will rage the healers to try to give the warden more time to tank there and that might be the saving grace of the attack here he's got the cleanup around the outside of the base here but he needs to turn back he's got everybody working on the storage but the warden needs to get back around here get back into the monolith he's counting down this might be their perfect war breaker and it is 98 percent. he cannot get into it and honestly he made some very very good adjustments right there and if the Roy Champion was able to get that down, it would have tripled, but it is a defense. Pressure's on now for Mega Sultan. Let's see if they can take advantage of it and get to eight stars themselves. Because we're going to see Root Riders aim for the next attack, and I've seen a lot of one stars recently with Root Riders. Usually when they try to use the overgrowth to lock up the town hall and not have the force to get back to it, because every time we see a nerf to Root Riders either directly or indirectly, it does end up making so that they have a little less punch, they have a little less survivability, and ultimately it makes it more difficult to return back into an overgrowth area, and usually that overgrowth contains the town hall, and so we see a ton of one stars as a result of that. But we see the king pop to earthquake boots and the spiky ball over to the right. Seen that a lot, seen that a ton actually. There's the queen running the invisibility file and the frozen arrow, warden running the eternal tome and the rage gem. We're actually seeing the rage gem a lot where the rage is able to boost the healing of the druids we're able to get more value out of the druids and i guess that gives more value overall than the healing tome would and with the the nurse that the healing tome took they only with the level 15 and the nerfs combined the healing tome only lasts for like 19 and a half seconds i think and so it doesn't give enough protection to make these guys want to use it although even though the eternal tome was reduced down to like 17 or 7 7.5 7 seconds i mean on hard mode when it's level 15 when you combine it with the other nurse that it took it actually is still seeing a lot of use there other than when everybody breaks out the fireball obviously but it looks like he's gonna get it done here it looks like the Rudas are gonna be able to power through the base there very clean attack here he was able to sustain the Rudas all the way through the base there he kept the queen and the world champion protected all the way through he will get the triple on this one and a min will get mega sultan right back in this war but they will need to find another defense because they are playing at a percentage disadvantage. What is this? What is Jijin doing here? We're seeing a Lalo, a rarity in the meta right now. He'll send in a blimp into the middle of the base. Maybe it's a super wizard bomb. Oh, actually we've seen this a couple times this week here. We've seen a lot of people breaking out super wizards. The blizzard is making his way back into the meta. He'll chain through the town hall. And as soon as he chains off of the town hall, the earthquake combines 
with the damage that was done by the chains. And so you have to keep in mind that if you chain through the town hall and you pop the earthquake early, then you you deal damage to the town hall and then you get less strikes against it to chain through. And so he waits until the town hall is gone. After it's gone down, then you pop the earthquake to hit all the buildings on the other side of it that it was chaining off of, and you take them all down as well. But on top of that, he's able to damage up a lot of the buildings over the left side of the base there, and he wipes out the core. On top of that, getting the CC dealt with all in the same time. You'll have Druids going with the World Champion. She'll work her way across the top of the base. And it looks like the King and Queen will work along the right side. But remember, we used the Warden to deliver that with the Total Tome and the Rage Gem to boost the extra blues that went in with the Warden. And so, oh, Royal Champion, are we, are we okay here? Royal Champion. Royal Champion, hang in there, hang in there. Throws in a Freeze, throws down the Rocket Spear, throws the Seeky Shield, gets the model down, and he's home free from there. Don't need a Warden on the back side of the base there because he already dealt with almost all the splash damage on the base. He had the heroes move into the areas that were most threatening for the balloons and also take advantage of the funnel form by the super wizards and the base is completely dismantled. That's how you get it done. Bringing back a classic right there. So nice to see an attack like this make it its way back into the meta and Jijin just showed us a masterpiece in how you should do it. These equipment changes affected everything from Lalo to Queen Charges to Root Riders, especially to Dragons. I feel like Dragons took one of the biggest hits there surprisingly and we're actually seeing some success out of the Root Riders still. So I think it is a very, very different meta than we have experienced in a very long time. But one thing that is consistent through this new meta is the smash attack. So Super Bowlers and Super Witches are starting to dominate and take over the game as we see a fireball to set this one up. And we'll see what Dash Ali can do as he makes his way forward. We're going to see the warden running the Unicorn and the Rage Gem. Immediately drops in the Super Witches. Doesn't finish forming the biggest funnel here, but I think everybody will stay to the right. Or stay to the bottom, I mean. Just as far right as he can be right now. But down to the very bottom of the base here, we're going to see the Queen drop in. Queen immediately pops the giant arrow and the healer puppet. We'll start to get those healers to go to the P.E.K.K.A.s to work with her. But she's put off from the group a little bit right there. And a little bit of a split of the healers there. She takes two, the P.E.K.K.A.s take one. And she will get the funnel established over there. And she'll join with the Super Witches and go to the core of the base. Now, is that where he wanted her to go is the question. The P.E.K.K.A.s end up getting wrecked. And so he'll have Valkyries now pick up the slack over there, and they're going to go to the inside of the base there, and they can get out in front of the World Champion and prevent her from getting targeted by the Monoth. He should be in a good spot there, but I would have preferred that those Valkyries stay to the outside of the Pekka survived a bit longer, but he will freeze up the artillery and the Monoth, make sure that goes down, and we still need to make sure we get to the Town Hall as well. We can't reach the Town Hall from the angle that he's attacking from. He has no access into it, but you know what can get him there? Not Earthquake Boost, because he doesn't have any. He's going to run the Giant Gauntlet and the the rage vial right there and that means that this town hall could absolutely destroy him on his flank and so we gotta find a way to get into it and take it down which means we have to attack the correct wall here he has more champion go to the back side of the base there she'll go straight to the multi inferno and does she go to the left or to the right he does it breaking the wall there everybody steps to the town hall crisis averted right there he will get it down now the question is can we finish off the base rc goes north but the expo does end up reaching very long distance it takes it down and guys, it's going to end up being a defense here. I have to wonder at this point if a king with the spiky ball and earthquake boots could have been the difference. Because I think that's the biggest difference between what we saw out of everybody else using Super Witches and this one right here. So that's not a good sign here for Mega Sultan. But then again, they needed a defense regardless. So now with a 77% on the board from that one and a previous 88% from an attack earlier and no time to change their plan. Star Sky just has to go in with whatever they had cooked up here, and Oling will be charging the core of the base with no blimp to go and snipe the town hall. No real backup plans ever in these queen charges. If the queen misses the town hall takedown, then these can quickly turn around to a one star, and a one star is exactly what Mega Sultan needs. So. We have to stay focused. We have to get this queen delivered to the core of the base. And we have to set up the Lalo to be able to wrap around the outside of the base afterwards. And we'll see what he's able to do here. But the queen will start to advance their way forward here. The second wall break was successful. The flame flinger is working through the expo. The queen's taking the expo, but she needs another rage here. Keep the healers raged and continue to charge her way forward. We're seeing the invisibility file 
and the frozen arrow on the queen once again not running the magic fear once again very surprising to see that as i expected almost everybody especially the queen charge to switch over to that but it's a rare thing to see at town hall 16 a war being decided by a queen charge but a risky one it is as he will make his way forward the second wall break or the third wall break goes in and opens up the very top of the base there that was his last wall break, so he doesn't have the core open, so he's in trouble here. This is definitely going to get dicey real quick here. He's about to gain his defensive queen. He will pop his ability there. He will get her down. King over the right there will pop his ability and search for. but what does the queen do? What does the queen do? Does she circle around or does she go to the wall? This will decide the war. She attacks the wall. Lucky, lucky break right there. I thought she might circle around and go over to the battle builder and the sweeper. But he just rocked gold right there as the queen powers through the wall and worked to get the town hall down. He got the rage on her. She'll step in and that should seal the deal. That should lock in the win in war number one of this best of three grand finals. But he's not done yet. He's going to go for the 14 star mark here and keep on pushing. Lalo in across the bottom base here as the queen was able to get everything that she was intended to take. And now with the warden eternal tome and healing tome protecting the blues of our champion sweeps across the right side and will help assist in the back end and he will completely overwhelm without having to worry about an activated town hall taking out everything look at all the traps in the core of the base they didn't have to fight any traps there because they were all packed around the town hall to prevent it going down to a lalo and it's a good thing you didn't have to go there with the lalo it's a win it's a triple and it's 14 stars for our golden ticket holders to the world championship but we got one more attack here so let's go see if that did one star what mega sultan's last patent looks like they'll get ready for war number two and if they can win war number two then we can force it to a third match and then we'd be in for a treat this weekend to give a three war grand finals here in the super Thrain cup but a queen charge into dragon riders is kind of interesting here playing figure working across the bottom base here is it, is it under any threat down there it looks like he just put in something to pair with it to go search for traps or maybe he did maybe he did maybe he didn't i didn't really see what he put down there if he did put anything but the queen is going to just charge the town hall takedown she can reach the poison tower multi-arch towers both sweepers air defenses the king doesn't just walk along the outside of the base there regardless of what town hall level you play never just put your king to walk along the outside of the base it's always tempting to do that when you do a queen charge to just put it on the outside and just let him coast and then wrap around to get the queen funneled in but it's always 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 better to get the king to punch into a command put a little bit of a funnel up ahead of him so he doesn't just form the funnel for the queen but he also steps in and clears the cover next to her which takes all the damage off of her flank and then also funnels further for her so that she can step in and then get another wall break deep for the base barrier because with these compartments cleared on the left now the wall breaker is able to target all the way to the inside of the base and make so that she can charge into the monolith and she can reach two multi infernos the defensive world champion and the defensive queen from that wall break so huge amount of value potential in there a bit of a dangerous charge with the monolith right there but looks like he powers through it fine and he will have the Dragon Riders in from the left side of the base there. Uses the word Champion. Looks like Warden running the Eternal Tome and the Healing Tome. And I'm surprised we're not running Rage Gem right there. I would have expected an Eternal Tome and a Rage Gem, which is very, very common with the Dragon Riders to be able to boost their damage output so we can focus all the spells on the Queen Charge herself. But the Queen is under a little bit of a crossfire right now, but she can reach the multi inferno take the damage off of her healers. Dragon Riders keep on moving. And with the Warden running the Diggy and the Warden Champion running the Spirit Fox, he's able to get the ground and air support there with stuns. And the Diggy will keep the Warden Champion safe on the ground right there and make so that the Warden Champion facing in and out will share the damage with the Diggy and they can work together there to stay alive even though it is an air attack. But now the Hog Puppet and Haze Bob go off the backside of the base there and he's got extra spells here for days. He's got so much extra on this attack. And if they were able to stop that Queen charge in the last one and force the one star, the Queen circled around like the last attack there, that moment that the Queen decided to attack the wall instead of circling around, that decided the war. That single-handedly made this war go into star sky instead of mega sultan because this attack right here from sniper was very very clean but make sure you're here in our next video for the next round of the super thrain grand finals as we see these teams face off again for round number two hit the like button subscribe to the channel and we'll see you in the next video